Hello everybody, Jennifer Maker here. Today we are going to explore the amazing world of paper crafting and create something truly stunning. A beautiful card that gives the illusion of three-dimensional stained glass. Isn't this gorgeous? The layers really make this card pop and I can't wait to show you how it's done. Once you learn the secret, you are sure to get hooked on making these. So please pull up a chair here at my craft table and we'll get started. Aren't these designs and colors just so pretty? I love making cards with my cutting machine. There's just something so special about a homemade card. But these aren't your regular basic everyday cards. These are more like little works of art. And the secret is in the layering. The images pop off the front and are really eye-catching. It might look complicated, but I promise anyone can make these with just a few materials and my tips and tricks. I've included square cards like this spectacular sunflower design and another version, this beautiful tropical card that's more of a standard card shape, but this one has a twist and I'll tell you about that a little later. The supplies for these cards are super simple, which I just love. You need a color printer, some quality cardstock, and some nice paper for printing the designs. I'm using this presentation paper, matte paper. It's got a really beautiful, smooth, non-glare finish. Isn't it awesome? And then I'm also using this metallic photo paper with a glossy finish and a really unique metallic surface that gives the image a lot of sharpness and depth. And since we'll be using the print and cut process on our cutting machines, it's important that you calibrate your machine before you start. You can find all the steps on how to do that at jennifermaker.com slash calibration. Now I cut my prints on a blue light grip machine mat, but a green standard grip machine mat works well along with a brayer. I really recommend a brayer. Now to put it all together, we'll use foam squares and some double-sided tape. And that's really it, it's easy peasy. So, which card do you think you would like to make? So many choices, right? So, let's get my free card designs and we'll learn how to bring this exquisite card to life. Step one, get your stained glass card designs. You can use pretty much any image for a stained glass card, and you may already have one in mind. If you don't, or you just want to use one of mine, I have several that are perfect and free for you to use. To find them, as well as the card base files that you'll need, go to jennifermaker.com 512. You can either download the files right from that link by saving the project, or download from my entire free design collection. To find it, look for libraries in the red bar at the top, then click either get a password if you don't yet have one, or click enter the library. Search the page for design number 512 and click the link to download the design. There are eight designs in my collection. These are all generated through an AI art generator and then made even more magical with image editing software. If you'd like to learn more about AI art, I have an entire workshop all about it and how you can make it too, and get those details on it over at jennifermaker.com slash AI dash art. This collection contains three rectangular designs featuring balloons, a butterfly with flowers, and tropical flowers. And there are also five square designs with a butterfly, a cake, a dragonfly, a flower, and a sunflower. And there are two card base SVG files, one with scored lines and one with dashed cut lines. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to make two different versions. We're going to make this sunflower with full color square layers and the tropical flowers with rectangular layers. And that's the one with the twist that I mentioned earlier. The twist is that it saves on ink. And we all know that ink can be expensive, so I am really happy to be able to show you a way to save ink. For this project, you can use pretty much any cutting machine that will cut out, you know, big enough. I'm going to use the Cricut Maker 3, but you can also use the original Cricut Maker, any Cricut Explorer, the Cricut Venture, or the Cricut Joy Extra. If you're not sure how to upload files, go to jennifermaker.com svgs to learn how to unzip and upload SVG files. Step two, prepare your card design. 
project number one, full color square card. First, let's upload our card design to Cricut Design Space. Click upload and upload image and browse. Select the square sunflower PNG image that's in the folder you downloaded. On the upload image screen, select complex and click continue. On the next screen, click apply and continue. Select print then cut image and upload. Find your design in recent uploads and click add to canvas. I'll show you how to set up the sunflower card for now and you can repeat these steps to upload additional designs that you want to make later on. So here's what the square sunflower design looks like on my canvas. As you can see, PNG files are very large, at least they are when they're at a high resolution like mine are. That's the way they appear when they're uploaded, but it's really pretty easy to resize them to the right size. Click the minus sign to zoom out so you can see the full image. That's better. To resize, make sure the lock icon is closed, then click the design to select it. And then I'm gonna make my card five by five inches, so I will type five for the width in the size menu up at the top, and then press enter or return on my keyboard. That looks right. Let's zoom back in a bit to see all of the beauty. Now it's time to turn our single image into multiple layers for the stained glass effect. With the design still selected, click twice on the duplicate icon above the layers panel. Now click and drag the two duplicated layers next to the first image so they're easier to see. Leave the first image as it is, click shapes in the left menu and select the square. Click the color swatch at the top and select black to change the color of the square. With the square still selected, enter four for the width in the size menu. Press enter on your keyboard. This square will be a border piece for the middle layer. Click and drag it over the first sunflower design. With the square selected, click the duplicate icon. Now change the size to 3.75 inches by typing that into the width field at the top and then press enter. Move the black square over the middle sunflower, select them both and click align in the top menu and then choose center. Next, click slice at the bottom of the layers panel. Click and drag the black square to the side. Find the border piece of the design in the layers panel, select it and click delete. Drag the square sunflower and place it on the black square of the first design. Don't worry about lining anything up just yet. Now click the 3.75 inch black square and change the size to three inches. Drag it over the top of the sunflower layer stack on the left. Click duplicate to make a copy of that square. Now change the duplicated square to 2.75 inches. Move the new smaller square over the third full-size sunflower design. With both selected, click align and center, and then choose slice once more. Delete the black square layer and the border layer. Drag the 2.75 inch square sunflower piece over on top of the three inch black square. Click select all in the top menu to select all of your completed layers. Now click align and center to confirm all layer sizes will align correctly. That looks great. Now let's group and hide that design for now while I show you how to make the rectangular tropical flower card and explain how this one saves on ink. Select all the layers, click group and hide by clicking the eye icon. Project number two, ink saving rectangular design. Follow all the same steps to add your PNG design to your canvas and then resize it. We'll make this one a four by six inch card. To resize, click the unlock icon above the size fields and enter four inches for the width and six inches for the height. Click shapes in the left menu and select the square. Now click the color swatch at the top and this time we will select white to change the color of the square. With the square selected, click the unlock icon above the size fields. Enter three for the width and five inches for the height and then press enter. Select the flower design and the white rectangle. 
Click Align and select Center, and then click Slice. In the Layers panel, select the Slice layer that has the center part of the flower design. Click Arrange and select Bring to Front. Drag the center flower layer to a blank area on the canvas. Select the white rectangle and click Duplicate. With the duplicate rectangle selected, click the Unlock icon above the size fields. Enter 2.75 inches for the width and 4.75 inches for the height. Select the 2.75 by 4.75 inch rectangle and the smaller flower layer. Click Align and select Center. Now click Slice. And then delete the border layer. Select the new white rectangle and click the unlock icon above the size fields. Now enter 2 inches for the width and 4 inches for the height. Select the resized white rectangle and the slice middle flower layer. Click Align and select Center and then click Slice. Now drag the border layer and the white rectangle over the white area of the first layer. Leave your extra flower layer where it is for now. Select the smaller white rectangle and click Duplicate. With the duplicate rectangle selected, click the Unlock icon above the size fields. Enter 1.75 inches for the width and 3.75 inches for the height. Select the small white rectangle and the small flower layer. Click Align and Center and then click Slice. Delete the white rectangle layer and the sliced border layer. Click Select All, and then click Align and Center to confirm all layers will align correctly. And there it is, another beautiful stained glass card. Before we hide it and add the card base, let me explain the twist with this design. I'll unhide the sunflower and then spread out all layers of both cards so you can see. All right, so you can see that the sunflower has full coverage on each layer while the tropical flower design has blank space in between. That's a way to get a similar look with less ink. Pretty cool, huh? All right, so let's realign, regroup, and hide everything so we can upload the card bases. Upload the card base file. Click Upload and then Upload Image and Browse. Select the SVG file with no score blank cards in the title. Click Upload, find your design and recent uploads, and click Add to Canvas. Zoom out just a bit so we can see both, and click the Ungroup icon. Delete or hide the card size that you don't need. I'm going to leave both since we're making both cards. If necessary, change the color of the card so it matches the border layers of the design. I'll change the square base card to black to match the border layers of the sunflower card, and I'll leave the other white, but you can choose any color you like. These are ready to go. Now it's time to print and cut everything. Step 3. Print and cut your design. First, let's add our cards back to the canvas by selecting them in the Layers panel and then clicking the eye icon. Feel free to spread everything out if you'd like to make sure it's all there. Now make sure the correct machine is selected in the top right corner and click Make It. On the Prepare screen, there should be four mats if you're making the same size cards as I am. Make sure the Print Then Cut material size is set to 8.5 by 11 inches. These will be the first two mats in your preview panel. There is one white mat and one black mat for cardstock. They can be cut on 8.5 by 11 inch or 12 by 12 inch. If you do change the material size, two more mats will appear to accommodate the change. I'm going to leave both at 12 by 12 inches. And then when you're done, click back on the first mat and then click continue. On the make screen, click send to printer. Select your printer from the printer drop down menu and make sure both add bleed and use system dialog are toggled on and then click print. You may need to minimize or move your design space window to see the print dialog window. It sometimes pops up behind Cricut design space. Every printer is a little different so if you're confused consult your printer's user guide for additional support. 
I'm using matte presentation paper for the tropical stained glass card design. I will set the media to brochure matte paper and the quality to best. You may not have these exact options, but what you're looking for is a matte paper and the best possible quality that you can get. For the metallic photo paper, I like to set my media to photo glossy paper and the quality again is at best. You may not have photo glossy paper, but look for something that's got glossy in the name. And then make sure the correct paper is in your printer in the correct orientation. Every printer is a little different, so check your manual if you're not sure, and then click print. After your printer has printed your design and the ink has dried, place the first print on a blue light grip machine mat. Use a brayer to secure the print to the mat, and you can add a piece of copy paper over the top to protect the print as you bray it down. <laughs> I don't know if bray is a word, as you, as you roll it down. <laughs> All right, in Cricut Design Space, select the material type. I'm using the laser copy paper setting for the presentation paper. Make sure your fine cut blade is loaded, and then press the flashing button to begin cutting. The machine will use the black registration marks to determine the exact spot to cut. And then once the cut is done, unload your mat, flip it over onto your work surface, and gently roll the print off of the mat. Keep in mind, the ink saver cuts are very delicate. Remove them slowly. If they curl a bit, you can always place them under a book or something similar like that to flatten them out. But be careful not to tear them. All right, back in Cricut Design Space, I found the heavy cardstock 100 pound setting with more pressure worked best for the metallic photo paper. Just make sure that your ink is dry and place your print on the mat to cut it. Again, you can put a piece of copy paper over it as you use your brayer to make sure it's really well adhered to your mat and then load your mat into your Cricut and start cutting. And when the cut is complete, again, flip your mat over onto your work surface and gently peel it away to remove the pieces. Now for the card base, I'm using cardstock. So I'll select the medium cardstock, 80 pound setting in Cricut Design Space and set the pressure to more for a cleaner cut. Place the cardstock on the mat. Use a brayer to secure the cardstock to the mat and load the mat into your Cricut and press the flashing button to begin cutting. If you have any troubles getting good cuts, remember you can look up my tips and tricks over at jennifermaker.com slash blades. And just like before, you wanna unload your mat, flip it over onto your work surface, and gently roll the mat away from your cardstock to get it off the mat without curling or ripping. Here is a look at all of my cut pieces. Step four, assemble your stained glass cards. Project number one, the square sunflower design. Now the fun part, time to put it all together. We'll start with the sunflower design. First, make sure all the pieces are facing the same direction. Use double-sided adhesive tape to attach the smallest print to the smallest cardstock square. Do the same with the middle-sized print and its corresponding cardstock layer. Now let's add some depth with some adhesive foam squares. Add them to the back of the middle layer. I'll put one in each corner and one in the middle. A weeding tool can help pull off the backing if you're having any troubles. Align the cardstock over the largest print. There will be a one inch border. Press it in place. Next, place adhesive foam squares on the back side of the small layer. Align the small layer over the middle layer and press it in place. Now fold the card base in half using a scraper tool along the fold for the best crease. Attach double-sided adhesive tape to the front of the card base and place the sunflower stained glass card design onto the card base. Press it in place. Isn't this just so pretty? Project number two, rectangular tropical flower design. Now let's put the tropical stained glass card together. First, fold the card base in half and make a nice crease using the scraper tool. Next, add double-sided adhesive tape to the back side of the largest layer. Place the largest design on the front of the card. The edges of the design will align with the cardstock. Use double-sided adhesive tape to attach the smallest print to the smallest cardstock rectangle. 
use the tape to attach the middle size print to its corresponding cardstock layer. Now put adhesive foam squares on the back side of the middle layer and remove the backings with the weeding tool if you need to. Align your cardstock over the open area of the largest print and press it in place. Place adhesive foam squares on the back side of the small layer. Align the top layer over the open area of the middle layer and press it in place. Step 5. Show it off. Here is what my finished stained glass cards look like. Aren't they gorgeous? You can also make your own envelopes with my tutorial over at jennifermaker.com 373. I love these stained glass cards and I know all of you do too. In fact, it was all of your photos and your requests for a tutorial that inspired me to create this tutorial video, right? So keep those requests coming. I love to teach you how to make the things that you are the most interested in. I'd also like to thank Amy from Leap of Faith Crafting for her wonderful tutorial video from which so many of our community members have been inspired to start making these awesome cards. I've linked to her video in the description so you can check it out too. Now, if you have any questions about paper crafting or anything else Cricut or craft related that you think I can help you with, please let me know. Leave your question below this video or come ask over in our Cricut Crafters group at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut Crafters. And please keep posting all of your gorgeous stained glass card pictures too. They're so beautiful and they really help to inspire and motivate others to make their own beautiful cards. And that's it for today. Until next time, this is Jennifer Maker reminding you to craft a life you love.